Sharing yeah, yeah, sharing. Yeah, yeah, sharing. But I couldn't share. Yes. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. <coughs> The first recorded cyber crime uh, took place in the year 1820. It's so surprising. <clears throat> in the year 1820, Joseph Mary Jacquard, a textile manufacturer in France, produced the loom. So this device allowed the repetition of a series of steps in the weaving of special fabrics. So this resulted in a fear amongst Jacquard employees that the traditional employment and livelihood were being threatened. They committed acts of sabotage to discourage Jacquard from further use of the new technology. This is the first recorded cyber crime. <clears throat> so in 1820, so it's very surprising. And <clears throat> the evolution of cyber crime. Cyber crime, <clears throat> the term cyber crime is a simple yet steady definition of cyber crime would be unlawful acts wherein the computer is either a tool or a target or both. The term computer used in this definition does not only mean the conventional desktop or laptop computer. It includes personal digital assistants, cell phones, sophisticated watches, cars, and a host of gadgets. <clears throat> Cybercrime as acts that are punishable by the Information Technology Act would be unsuitable as the Indian Penal Code also covers many cyber crimes such as email spoofing, cyber defamation, etc. You know, uh, types of cyber crime. Cyber crime refers to all activities done with the criminal intent in cyberspace. These fall into three slots those against persons, against business, and non business organizations, crime targeting the government. <clears throat> Let us examine the acts wherein the computer is a tool or an unlawful act. This kind of activity usually involves a modification of a conventional crime by using computer. So types of computer uh, cyber crimes. First, financial crimes. So financial crimes includes all ATM frauds, online banking frauds. So money is the most common motive behind all crime. The same is also true of cybercrime. Globally, it is being observed that more and more cybercrimes are being committed for financial motives rather than for revenge or, or for fun. With a tremendous increase in the use of internet and mobile banking, online share trading, dematerialization of shares and securities, this trend is likely to increase unabated. Financial crimes include cyber cheating, credit card frauds, money laundering, hacking into bank servers, computer manipulation, accounting scams, etc. <clears throat> I want to give some few illustrations in this financial crimes. Uh, illustration one, Punjab National Bank in India was cheated to the tune of rupees 13.9 million through false debits and credits in computerized accounts. And in another case, uh, rupees 2 lakhs 50 thousand were misappropriated by from Bank of Baroda in India through falsification of computerized bank accounts. Then another case in Hyderabad, police in arrested an unemployed computer operator and his friend, a steward in a prominent five-star hotel for cheating and misusing credit card numbers belonging to a hotel customers. The next topic is cyber stalking. It also comes under the cyber crime. Now the cyber crime is because of the various developments in the uh, digital world and moreover the social networking websites. Many people have been cheated and been punished in this regard. Cyber stalking can be defined as the repeated acts, harassment or threatening behavior of the cyber criminal towards a victim by using internet services. Stalking in general terms can be referred to as the repeated acts of harassment targeting the victim, such as following the victim, making harassing cell phone calls, killing the victim pets, vandalizing victim's property, 
leaving written messages or objects. Stalking may be followed by serious violent acts such as physical harm to the victim and the same has to be treated and viewed seriously. It all depends on the course of conduct of the stalker. Cyber stalking refers to the use of the internet, email or other electronic communication device to stalk another person. It is a relatively new form of harassment, unfortunately rising to alarming levels, especially in big cities like Mumbai, Delhi, in <clears throat> Chennai, Bangalore, etc. So who is a cyber stalker? A cyber stalker sends harassing or threatening electronic communications to the victim, both kinds of stalkers, online and offline, of desire to control the victim's life. And I want to share how does a cyber stalker operate? A typical cyber stalker collects all personal information about the victim, such as name, family background, telephone numbers of residents and workplace, daily routine of the victim, address of residence and place of work, date of birth, etc. If the stalker is the victim's occupants, he she has easy access to this information. If the, if the stalker is a stranger, he she collects the information from internet resources such as various profiles. The victim may have filled in while opening chat or email accounts or while signing an account with some website. The stalker may post this information on any website related to dating services, posting as if the victim is posting this information and invite the people to call the victim on our telephone numbers to have a relationship. A stalker even uses very filthy and obscene language to invite the interested persons. People of kind from nook and corner of the world who come across this information start calling the victim at her residence and at her workplace <clears throat> for dating. Some stalkers subscribe the email account of the victim to innumerable pornographic and other sites, because of which victim starts receiving such kind of unsolicited emails. Some stalkers keep on sending repeated emails asking for various kinds of favors or threaten the victim. The stalkers follow the victim from message board to message board. They hang out on the same boards as their victim many times posting notes to the victim making sure the victim is aware that he she is being followed. <clears throat> Stalkers will almost always make contact with their victims through mail. <clears throat> or now the social uh, uh, network website like WhatsApp, Viber, and other you know, apps. So when does cyber stalking happen? In many cases, the cyber stalker and the victim had a prior relationship and the cyber stalking begins with the victim attempts to break off the relationship. However, there also have been many instances of cyber stalking by strangers. They're giving the enormous amount of personal information available through the internet. A cyber stalker can easily locate private information about a potential victim with a few mouse clicks or keystrokes. The fact that cyber stalking does not involve physical contact may create the misconception that it is more benign than physical stalking. This is not necessarily true. As the internet becomes an ever more integral part of our personal and professional lives, stalkers can take advantage of the ease of communication as well as increased access to the personal information. In addition, the ease of use and non conformant <clears throat> impersonal and sometimes anonymous nature of internet communications may remove disinterest to cyber stalking. Whereas a potential stalker may be unwilling or unable to confront a victim in person or on the telephone, he or she may have little hesitation sending harassing or threatening electronic communication to a victim. Finally, as with physical stalking, online harassment and threats may be prelude to more serious behavior, including physical violence. So in uh, the social networking website websites, Nowadays, people, you know, uh, uh, they just like um, giving all the information, their names, mobile numbers, the personal, uh, everything they share. It's like locking your house and giving the keys to a stranger. So I advise you should come out of all this uh, uh, social net website, networking websites. <clears throat> the next is... Cyber phonography. 
the cyber pornography is believed to be one of the largest businesses on the internal internet today the millions of pornographic websites that flourish on the internet are testimony to this while pornography per se is not illegal in many countries child pornography is strictly legal illegal in most nations today cyber pornography covers pornographic websites pornographic magazines produced using computers to publish and print the material on the internet to download and transmit pornographic pictures photos writings etc the next is sale of illegal articles it is becoming increasingly common to find cases where sale of illegal articles such as narcotics drugs weapons wildlife etc is being facilitated by the internet information and the availability of the products for sale is being posted on auction websites bulletin boards etc it is practically impossible to control or prevent a criminal from setting up a website to transact in illegal articles additionally there are several online payments gateways that can transfer money around the world at the click of a button the internet has also created a marketplace for the sale of unapproved drugs prescription drugs dispensed without a valid prescription or products marketed with fraudulent health claims many sites focus on selling prescription drugs and are referred to by some as internet pharmacies these sites offer for sale of either approved prescription drug products or in some cases unapproved illegal versions of prescription drugs this possess a serious potential threat to the health and safety of patients the broad reach relative anonymity and ease of creating new or removing old websites possess great challenges for law enforcement officials in one case in march 2007 the pune rural police cracked down on an illegal rave party and arrested hundreds of illegal drug users the social networking site arkout.com is believed to be one of the modes of communication for gathering people for the illegal drug party the next topic is online gambling <clears throat> there are thousands of websites that offer online gambling the special issue with online gambling is that it is legalized in several countries so legally the owners of these websites are safe in their home countries the legal issues arise when a person residing in a foreign country like india where such websites are illegal gambles on such a website then intellectual property crimes this includes software piracy copyright infringement trademarks violations theft of computer source code etc <clears throat> then on case law a software professional from bangalore in india was booked for stealing the source code of a product being developed by his employees he started his own company and allegedly used the stolen source code to launch a new software product in 2003 a computer user in china obtained the source code of a popular game lion the gel from an unprotected website this proprietary code was then sold to several people in 2004 one of these people set up a website to offer the lineage game at a discount despite legal warnings from the south korean company that owned the lineage source code the suspect did not shut down the site he rented powerful servers enough to accommodate 4000 simultaneous gamers and solicited donations from users to help defray the cost then email spoofing a spoofed email is one that appears to originate from one source but actually has been sent from another source then <clears throat> forgery counterfeit currency notes postage and revenue stamps mark sheets academic certificates etc are made by criminals using sophisticated computers printers and scanners in october 1995 economic offences wing of crime branch mumbai seized over 22000 counterfeit share certificates of eight reputed companies worth rupees 34 crores these were allegedly prepared using desktop publishing systems then another case abdul karim telgi along with several others was convicted in india on several counts of counterfeiting stamp papers and postage stamps totaling several billion rupees then cyber defamation this occurs when defamation takes place with the help of computers and or the internet 
and on illustration abhishek a teenage student was arrested by the thane police in india following a girl's complaint about tarnish her image in the social networking website account abhishek had allegedly created a fake account in the name of the girl with her mobile number posted on the profile the profile had been sketched in such a way that it drew levit comments from many who visited her profile the thane cyber cell tracked down abhishek from the false email id that he had created to open up the account the denial of service this is an act by criminal who flats the bandwidth of the victim's network or fills his email box with spam mail depriving him of the services he is entitled to access or provide this act is committed by a technique called spoofing and buffer overflow the criminal spoofs the ip address and flood the network of the victim with repeated requests since the ip address is fake the victim machine keeps waiting for response from the criminal's machine for each request this consumes the bandwidth of the network which then fails to serve the legitimate request and ultimately breaks down <coughs> then hackers hacking is a simple terms means intrusion into a computer system without the permission of the computer owner user the purpose of hacking is greed power publicity revenge adventure desire to access forbidden information destructive mindset every act committed towards breaking into a computer or a network is hacking hackers write or use ready made computer programs to attack the target computer they possess to the desire to destruct and they get the kick out of such destruction some hackers hack for personal monetary gains such as to stealing the credit card information transferring money from various bank accounts to their own account followed by withdrawal of money they extort money from some corporate giant threatening him to publish the stolen information which is critical in nature government websites are the hot targets of the hackers due to the press coverage they receive <laughs> then online fraud the net is a boon for people to conduct business effectively very quickly it saves business a lot of time money and resources unfortunately the net is also an open invitation to scamsters and fraudsters and online frauds are becoming increasingly rampant <clears throat> virus hawks mails it is a sad fact of life that there are those who enjoy exploiting the concerns of others many emailed warnings about viruses or hacks designed purely to cause concern and disrupt businesses these warnings may be genuine so don't take them lightly but always <coughs> check the story out by visiting an anti virus site such as mcafe sophos or simon tack before taking any action including forwarding them to friends and colleagues then lottery frauds there are these are letters or emails which inform the recipient that he she has won a prize in the lottery to get the money the recipient has to reply after which another mail is received asking for bank details so that the money can be directly transferred the email also asks for a processing fee handling fee of course the money is never transferred in this case the processing fee is swindled and the banking details are used to other frauds and scams then software piracy so the pirated software cd which you bought for a couple of 100 bucks may have saved you some money but it in the long run it can do a lot of more harm to you than good do you know that by buying such pirated software you may be aiding and abetting crime <clears throat> so what is software piracy theft or theft of software through the illegal copying of genuine programs or the counterfeiting and deception of products intended to pass for the original is termed as termed as software piracy examples of so software piracy <clears throat> end user copying friends loaning disks uh, to each other or organization under reporting the numbers of softwares installations they have made or disk loading or disk vendors loads pirated software counterfeiting large scale duplication and distribution of illegally copied software illegal downloads from the internet by intrusion cracking serial numbers etc <clears throat> then virus dissemination 
what is vi computer virus a computer virus is a program that can infect other legitimate programs by modifying them to include a possibly evolved copy of itself viruses can spread themselves without the knowledge or permission of the users to potentially large numbers of programs of many machines a computer virus passes from computer to computer like a biological virus passes from person to person viruses viruses can also contain instruction that cause damage or annoyance the combination of possibly damaging code with the ability to spread is what makes viruses a considerable concern how do viruses spread viruses can often spread without any readily visible symptoms a virus can start on even driven efforts from a <clears throat> triggered after a specific number of executions time driven efforts or can occur at random so who commits a cyber crime who can typically expected to indulge in a cyber crime <clears throat> disgruntled employees and ex employees spouses lovers crack into networks with a malicious intent most serious threats to networks and system worldwide then web defacement web defacement is usually the substitution of this original home page of a website with another page usually pornographic or defamatory in nature by a hacker religious and government sites are regularly targeted by hackers in order to display political or religious beliefs disturbing images and offensive phrases might be displayed in the process as well as signature of sorts to show who was responsible for the defacement websites are not only defaced for political reasons many defaces do it just for the thrill for example there are online contests in which hackers are awarded points for defacing the largest number of websites in a specified amount of time corporations are also targeted more often than other sites on the internet and they often seek to take measures to protect themselves from defacement of hacking in general websites represent the image of a company or organization and these are therefore especially vulnerable to defacement visitors may lose faith in sites that cannot promise security and will become wary of performing online transactions after defacement sites have to be shut down for repairs sometimes for an extended period of time causing expenses and loss of profit then email bombing email bombing refers to sending a large number of emails to the victim resulting in the victim's email account or mail servers or an email service provider crashing email bombing is a type of denial of service attack a denial of service attack is one in which flood of information request is sent to a server bringing the system to its knees and making the server difficult to access then data diddling one of the most common forms of computer crime is data diddling <clears throat> illegal or unauthorized data altercation these changes can occur before and during data input or before output data diddling cases have affected banks payrolls inventory records credit cards records school transcripts and virtually all other forms of data processing known then salami attack these attacks are used for committing financial crimes the key here is to make the altercation so significant that in a single case it would go completely unnoticed <clears throat> for instance a bank employee inserts a program into the bank server that detects a small amount of money for example rupees 2 a month from the account of every customer no account holder will probably notice this unauthorized debit but the bank employee will make a sizable amount of money every month the attack is called salami attack as it is analogous to slicing the data thinly like a salami then <clears throat> trojans and keyloggers a trojan as this program is aptly called is an unauthorized program which functions from inside 
what seems to be an unauthorized program thereby concealing what is actually doing key loggers are regularly used where to log on all the strokes of victim makes of the keyboard this assumes sinister proportions if a key logger is installed on your computer which is regularly used for online banking and other financial transaction key loggers are most commonly found in public computers such as those in cyber cafes hotels etc unsuspecting victims also end up downloading spyware when they click on friendly offers for free software then internet time theft this connotes the usage by an unauthorized person of the internet hours paid by other persons on illustration in may 2000 the delhi police arrested an engineer who had misused the login name and password of a customer whose internet connection he had set up the case was filed under the indian penal code and the indian telegraph act then web hacking just as conventional hijacking of an airplane is done by using force similarly web hacking means forcefully taking over control of a website the motive is usually the same as hijacking ransom the perpetrators have either a monetary or political purpose which they try to satiate by holding the owners of the website to ransom this occurs when someone forcefully takes control of a website by cracking the password and later changing it the actual owner of the website does not have any more control over what appears on that website then email frauds <coughs> in reality this is a scam email originating from a college in a sarangur india canadian citizens are targeted with these emails so email frauds like email spoofing phishing etc and cyber terrorism computer crime as it mankind with unbelievable severity computer viruses worms trojans denial of service attacks spoofing attacks and e frauds have taken the real and the virtual worlds by storm over all this pale in the face of the most dreaded threat that of cyber terrorism <clears throat> cyber terrorism is the premeditated use of disruptive activities or the threat thereof in cyber space with the intention to further social ideological religious political or similar objectives or to intimidate any person in furtherance of such objectives the use of encryption by terrorists the disturbing trend that that is emerging nowadays is the increasing use of encryption i frequency encrypted voice data links encryption softwares like pretty good privacy etc by terrorists and members of organized crime cartels strong encryption is the criminal's best friend and the policeman's worst enemy so these are the uh, evolution of cyber crime and the types of cyber crime so i want to share some general guidelines on cyber safety now you should not give out any identifying information such as your name home address or telephone number in the chat room even vital details like age gender should never be divulged to anyone do not send your photograph to anyone on the internet unless you know the person well enough do not respond to the messages or bulletin board items that are obscene belligerent or threatening never arrange a face to face meeting with someone who have just met on the internet in case you have to meet this person make sure you have someone with you for the meeting and inform someone of the person and place you will be going to remember people online are not always who they seem to be and for for a safety banking online banking or mobile banking i used i used to suggest some ideas and some tips <clears throat> nowadays people are using uh, out of 10 people nine of them are using uh, this um, uh, not uh, apple phone everybody is using uh, smartphones so 
i would advise to have a two phones one mobile you have to it's like a small simple button phone that you can use only for calling and receiving the calls and you can have a smartphone the smartphone where you can install all the apps like your banking apps and other uh, uh, social websiteing apps so when you get a um, otp or a sms you will be getting to your the uh, smaller version of that the button phone so there won't be any connection with the android phones the so people the android phone is the more vulnerable device where it is easily can compromise by any hackers so while using a android phone you can use only for your data there is data usage so you can have two phones one phone for data usage and the another simple phone that is a button phone for your call details so this will protect you from online fraud banking fraud and etc so i just thank ms indra uh, madam for giving an opportunity and sharing my experience with you all the participants and thanking you and good day sir sir we have a question from the participant yeah from dr pandi kumar yes that he faced some problem that two days before two days back i experienced okay. in my smartphone with messages from in the name of flipkart apollo pharmacy etc a okay. cyber phishing but yeah. i could not click any link in that said messages kindly guide us how to avoid those kind of messages so uh, so for this only i told um, mr pandi kumar the simple simple thing just you have to use two mobiles one is a small uh, that is a uh, the small device that is a button phone the simple phone so where you can have only calls and sms and the otps so the other uh, device where you can install all the apps and you can use the data for, for online banking and everything so you won't get any uh, otp or sms to the uh, the where you have installed the apps so that way you can prevent all the uh, you know online uh, crimes so i advise you better use two phones that is android is the most vulnerable device where you can easily compromise and everybody can be hacked and moreover an apple iphone also may be compromised but it has more secure secured you know uh, more security is there in apple so any other questions regarding uh, and i i i, will, I, I would advise to have two accounts bank accounts that is where you can Uh, uh for one account not more than not more than 10000 rupees where you can use for your online uh, paying online uh, for a gpay or everything but another account where you have to go personally where you can keep more than a lakh or something where you have to go personally physically to the bank and do a banking so this way you can stop and you can prevent many cyber crimes sir my personal question sir tell me madam sir one of the question another one question is there otp or automatically read and one more thing is the sim installed is automatically deduction in gpay or phone pay sir like that they are given pandi kumar no no see uh, so you can have two two phones and while in, uh, installing the apps you can use this mobile number the same mobile number where you are using the button phone no you can put the same number that but the otp will be coming to the this phone only not to the uh, a smartphone so that way you can prevent so this is the only way to protect us right sir yes this is the only way to protect because uh, as i said earlier uh, the uh, you know android phones android phones easily from where you can uh, you know uh, hack everybody's phone it's very very simple you can go in the uh, internet you can search in google and even youtube also the simple person can go search for uh, hacking the android phones that can be compromised so easily okay uh srinivasan sir can you give co-host to pandi kumar sir srinivasan sir srinivasan sir are you audible uh, 
So, um, hi, ma'am. So, any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hi, Sandeep Sodhra. My name is Arul Alexander. I'm an uh, IT profession, and uh, yes. your session was an awesome one. Uh, that was an informative as well as uh, lem lemon can understand. Uh, by the way of your presentation, because okay. uh, I've, I've been you. seeing uh, the very first beginning the slides alone, and after that, when you were talking, that was very much interested and were and that was okay. speaking to me uh, in a visible mode and as well as imaginary mode. Okay, okay. and, and uh, in this, uh, I think we've been talking about the uh, phishing emails, right? So yes. in an organizational structure, we can find out, or else uh, the system will uh, maybe give. A, Heads up that you are getting an email. Maybe this could be a phishing one. So we will have no, an option no, 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 no. to report that to a phishing email session. The security okay. operations team will take care of that. But when okay. it is, comes to the Gmail or the personal emails, a person, how we can identify this one is a phishing and this one is a genuine one? Okay. So now uh, uh, many mails, you know, all the mails, you know, uh, phishing. We can't differentiate whether it's a, a, a genuine mail or a phishing mail. Unless right. if it is from a stranger, if you get a mail from a stranger, then you should be more careful. And you can't by seeing the mail itself, you can't say that whether it's a phishing mail or a genuine mail. Unless you have to go take the IP address of the mail and you have to uh, just uh, check the email address from the IP, then only we can check whether it's a, a phishing mail or uh, it's a genuine mail. So it's very hard. So you should be, we should be more you know, aware that uh, uh, by clicking a mail or before uh, clicking a mail or anything from the mail attachment, should be more careful uh, <laughs> because as I said, phishing mail, like uh, no, they, they are using a lot of, uh, you know, uh, use and uh, throw like uh, the uh, mails under there. The, so <clears throat> I would suggest before uh, not clicking or uh, reading any new mail, you should be more careful and more aware. This is my advice. All right, thank you, sir. And another question I have. And okay. in uh, Google Pay or a phone pay, one of the person or one of my friend was working in, uh, uh, in her high court, uh, maybe okay. the judicial side. And okay. the, literally, uh, she was getting a call from uh, one of the banking companies, maybe you know, uh, Indian Bank or SBI. And they are stating yeah. that uh, for the transactions and uh, she has to provide uh, some of the OTP and OTP was provided because she lost the money. The amount was detected, but that was not credited to another person's account. That time she is getting a call from the customer set stating they are asking them to share the OTP. She shared everything. And at okay. last I found, she came into me and I found that the Teams viewer was installed in her phone. Okay. And uh, she was trying to comply this to the cyber crime personalities, and they were advising. They are not taking it completely, but they are giving suggestions as well as the advisors. I'm not sure uh, how much uh, this type of police department will uh, take this into deep or dig this into deep and get a solution, because once once this amount is credited to the another person's account, obviously they can reach out the banking sector, which account that person has and whose address it is, and they can catch out the person, right? I'm, I yes. think uh, this is not happening uh, worldwide uh, or else in, in a geographical wise because yes. no one is directly coming forward and complaining or not taking the responsibility to take the risk because if they are taking the risk, they will have to spend 50,000 for 10,000 of amount. Yeah, uh, correct. See, the police department, they were never, you know, they doesn't know how to proceed with this all types of, now only the uh, you know, uh, police department has been given uh, many trainings and uh, uh, they have been advised to how to proceed with all these cases. And uh, uh, this uh, banking fraud calls, you know, in, in, in Trichapoli, my native, where uh, one uh, deputy commissioner, Mr. Sakti Ganesh, we, our team only, first in India, we went and we arrested few people uh, related to all these crimes from Delhi. Then we recovered all this money. And the, even the banking authorities clearly says that we never advise, we never, you know, make any calls to ask you the OTP number or any SMS or any other things, they are clearly advising or giving an awareness. So we should be more, you know, uh, equipped not to uh, attend all this or uh, reply to all this um, fake calls. So this only, this is the way to protect ourselves. And moreover, for giving a complaint, first, you, first of all, once uh, uh, money has been transferred to some other account through this uh, uh, fraud, 
first you have to go give a complaint to the banking authorities where the banking authorities can take the ip address from where the money has been transferred so they give all those details then after getting all those details we have to uh, take a complaint make a complaint and enclose all these attachments then only we can go and give to the police department so by doing this we can you know uh, we can save some time because directly going to approaching the bank uh, the police department then the police will advise you to first give all the uh, details about the transfer and everything we we don't know from where the account has been transferred the money has been transferred so it takes more time the police will go to the bank and they just uh, uh, interview uh, they investigate with the bank authorities then they take all those uh, data so before doing such things first go give a complaint to the banking authorities take all the data from banking authorities then give a complaint enclosing all the details with the police department that way now all the cyber cells has been equipped with uh, brilliant uh, softwares and brilliant uh, police personnel are there now they are you know getting up to the mark to solve all the cyber crimes all right thank you sir thank you for your valuable thank information you. yeah, yeah. and uh, the session was uh, detailed the information about the uh, yeah. the cyber crimes and all this stuff and thanks yeah. that too. we have a wonderful person on this thank you thank you uh, thanks okay. thanks thanks for thank you uh, uh, so i have a question sir as you have said that we are uh, taking the data to the cyber crime uh, police officer they could have inform even though now uh, this uh, nigerian theft it's not at all able to find it out now now also right we are facing the difficulties yes, still now because <clears throat> even the police department say you know uh, there are a lot of uh, you know many tools regarding all this you know to uh, investigate and to uh, <clears throat> many uh, cyber cell are not provided with all those tools and even the police officers were working in the cyber cells are not you know having more knowledge about this so nowadays only the each and every city commissioner has been uh, giving more you know uh, uh, concentration into the cyber crimes uh, the cyber uh, cells so well equipped uh, cyber police officers have been appointed <laughs> so uh, this way only we can you know make more uh, uh, awareness okay sir uh sir you have given a very nice session sir actually an awareness about the cyber crime and how to detect and prevent the cyber crime security as well as uh, cyber crime evaluation also uh, you have clearly explained very well about the cyber stalking email spoofing pornography websites phishing attacks and uh, online frauds uh, how the software virus is occurring how the email frauds can be prevented at last you have given your own suggestions that we can use the two phones avoiding the android phone android phone so that we can easily avoid those types of frauds etc sir uh, and um, one more thing that mcafe if, if we use that mcafe it will be predictable you said na sir that is it uh, uh, i think that it is also breakable uh, this mcafe yes, yes, yes. it is also break up breakable only sir Yes, yes, but uh, I, uh, I, I'm using a no ESET Note thirty two. That is the best, uh, you know, firewall uh, that can not be, you know, other, uh, you know, the firewalls may they will also produce the viruses by itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, they that McAfee company is used to produce the virus, and they will find the antivirus for the same yes, also. Yes, yes, yes. ESET Note is very good now. Yeah, yes, 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 sir. But, yes, but as you have said, Apple is highly secured with Red Hat, etc. So everyone can't have the Apple phones, etc. So we can go for this uh, one of the suggestion as you have said. Uh, it can be having two mobiles, yeah, one yeah, on normal can, and uh, the other. Avoid the online fraud also by the banking sectors. Most probably, yes. banking sectors only the peoples are get, getting affected because the, from the rural side, without having the knowledge, they are giving the OTP from the phone itself to the hackers. So it, the, for the hackers, it is e easy to hack the informations and. Uh, Uh, financial frauds is also occurring there uh, as we are hearing day to day life uh, even though so without uh, social media the communication is also not viable yes. at present so we <laughs> so as of even um, even see more cases now uh, there is uh, you know updating because of this uh, online uh, you know uh, social uh, networking websites many cases many you know like the facebook uh, many offenses have been you know Yes. Made. So, uh, see, like you know, we don't have any conversation with the neighbor who is residing next to your next door, but uh, you are sharing everything to a person who have not met. 
it's it's a truly a stranger so it's right. like a, a locking a, a locking your house and handing over the keys to the stranger so i just suggest everybody to come out of all those you know, social you know networking websites better that way you can keep okay. safe thank you sir thank you very much for your a uh, wonderful session for this uh, uh, e conference sir thank you sir thank you okay. very much thanks and a uh, good day to all thanks yeah okay. you can leave the session sir dear participants sharp around 12 o'clock please get ready for your paper presentation within 15 minutes we can start our presentation paper presentation 12 o'clock
சீனிவாசன் சார் சம்பட குலவாணின் மேம் வருவாங்க அவங்களுக்கு கோஹோஸ்ட் கொடுத்துருங்க சார் சீனிவாசன் சார் Ma'am, good afternoon, ma'am. Madam? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Okay. Shall I start? Wait, wait, ma'am. Wait, wait. Okay. Wait, wait. Sambada Gulavani, ma'am. Am I audible to you? Please unmute your mic, ma'am. Thank you. 
मैम गुड आफ्टरनून हेलो मैम गुड आफ्टरनून मैम या या आई एम कॉलिंग द टेक्निकल रिव्यू मैडम संबड़ा गुड मॉर्निंग मैडम ओके विल वेट फॉर इट 5 मिनट्स madam can you hear me ma'am unmute your mic actually srinivasan sir co host kuduttingla madam ku ah ma'am can you hear me yes ma'am okay ma'am ma'am let us start the technical review session yes ma'am yes okay ma'am very good afternoon to one and all present here the first questions any jennifer are you ready ma oh, yes yes let's yes. ready any jennifer can you hear me yes i do yeah you please share your screen and start present your paper okay okay thank you Okay, good afternoon to everybody. So, my paper. I'm going to present a paper on a review on fake news detection methodologies on digital data. So, I'm an assistant professor, Department of Computer Science and Application, and from the Arulanandar College, Karmatur. So, the abstract is: so, fake news is spreading all over the place. That means from the social media, the news, the uh, all over the digital data. So, here, the it creates an unworthy and uh, distrust. towards the social media and, and at, uh, according to the viewers this paper addresses a fake news detection model on digital data where the fake news is spread across most of the social media and other news over the websites okay here the some of the methodology analyzed and the methods are diffusive net network using a text mining and data mining and tf idf word to vector using a support vector machine and the next one is a machine learning approaches then a network model and a knowledge based approaches that is a or a network based approaches cnn and rnn so here uh, here is an introduction so in the today's world of fake news spreads increasing in a prevalent problem is a prevalent problem and finally it leads to a negative uh, impact to the further society and the fake news can be analyzed uh, analyze a simulation tool and uh, in the fake news uh, analysis uh, the architecture contains network analysis about uh, detection sentiment analysis and tweet content analysis the next one is a clickbait analysis is done with a pretend model uh, that's a click uh, mask from the sentiment the sentiment analysis which has 82% accuracy this analysis is done on the highest retweet count and lowest retweet count So the highest retweet count is classified as a clickbait, and the method uh, helps to analyze the news which is in, uh, spreading using the simulation tool. So first one is a deep diffusion network model. So here I have uh, there is a method that is a method model called fake detector. So this is a, a label interface problem of uh, this is a, it will create a ability a label interface problem, and in here we have used the deep diffusion network model. Um, Here there is a two main components. They represent a, 
efficient feature learning and credibility label interface which compose the deep diffusion net this fake detector proposes the, to train the framework with a back propagation algorithm the creator subject in the testing set and its predicted credibility with uh, will be the final result a new uh, new data set the poly factor is taken as a real world fake news data set then here there is a uh, in the experiential setting the credibility labels are uh, 6 5 4 3 2 and 1 so they the labels are given as a true most mostly true half true mostly false and false so the final one is a planet in the fire uh, okay here the uh, there is a the articles and subjects and the uh, how much of the relationship between the uh, subject and articles and the uh, uh, fact and the real that is a uh, uh, true or real the relationship is uh, calculated this will be done uh, this will be done by the weightage the weightage is given the sum of the news articles where the weight is denoted denotes the percentage of the article for each class so at the end the creator subject a round score will be round truth based on the training set of news articles subject creator the fake detector model is proposed in the experiential results by so there is a two classes that is a by class interface results and the next is a multi class interface results uh, next one is so this uh, the, this method first provides a systematic formulation of a fake news detection problem and the real states of factual defects and introduce a unified framework for a fake news article based on a deep learning model and heterogeneous network analysis technique so next one is a cnn that is a conversion neural network this is a network model this is a network approach it uses a dimensional matrix for input rather than vector it computes a conventional between input and matrix it performs a conventional operation while converting between input and output layer so you know one of the limitations in the cnn is it requires the data of, that is requires many data for a good result so next is the rnn the recurrent neural network so this is the approach uh, is a sequential data use the sequential data and it memorizes all the text that it is in need okay so next one is a so it also deal with a long uh, it, it it can't deal with a long dependent data so next is a machine learning based approach the first one is a if idf algorithm so first one is a tf that is a tf is a term uh, frequency and idf uh, is a inverse document frequency so this is an algorithm used and the next algorithm is a word to effect algorithm is used uh here the sperm filtering and speech tagging are done by classifying the news uh this can be done by the text categorization in the field of natural language processing nlp the, con- the current research unsupervised machine learning method are used to classify and the data set is uh, divided using the support vector machine each word is a dip- independent and uh, the order of the word is unique so it is a text classification method using this method we can uh, classify whether the uh, we can pick the word and classify whether it is a real or true uh, so it is a statistical method to find the word that appears more frequently the word that is more frequently is taken and uh, the the there is an analysis and the analysis will be done from the most frequent uh, word next is a word to vector algorithm so here in this met- method there is a uh, cbo w cbo w model and skid gram model so this uh, model is uh, to predict the probability of the occurrence of the word within the window of some pixel size so skid gram model is to predict the content word context word from the current word so here word to vector and uh, tf id as are, are combined to represent documentation vector so next is a support vector machine uh, svm so here we are using the support vector machine and navi the two approaches are used uh, this is one of the supervised machine learning approaches for the text classification
the training data is separated into two groups one group belongs to the one of the class and another group belongs to the another class these groups belongs to the training data this approach needs a small amount of data for the classification process um so this gives an broad accuracy for the uh, for finding the real or fake news so navy bay approach and that we call it as a nb so here there is a uh, some uh, methods as a multivariant bernoulli navy navy bay next one is a, a multinomial navy bay and cam nb and then is a complement navy bay uh, yeah, cnb so these methods are used for the uh, finding the difference the difference between the real and uh, fake news so far last one is a uh, is a conclusion from the all the methods so the the, the deep uh, diffusion network model is an outstanding result has an outstanding result and the text classification that is a term frequency gives a text classification model and it gives from the text classification model word to vector is a is a is an algorithm that gives a better result okay thank you and these are the reference taken Okay, thank Ma'am, you. Can ask, ma yes, uh, madam, uh, really nice presentation. Uh, one thing I would like to ask, whether you implemented all these models, ma'am? Okay, no, no, ma'am, this is a survey paper. Huh? So, this is a survey paper, ma'am. I have not implemented, they have uh, just analyzed it. Okay, just analyzed. Then how can you say that this model is better than this model? Until and unless you have not implemented it, based on analysis, ma'am. Based on the analysis of uh, others, I can. Okay, so uh, others, uh, with the help of others' review, uh, you come to conclusion. Ah, uh, yes, ma'am. Okay, okay, ठीक है. Okay, Thank nice you. presentation. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, madam, very nice presentation. We can go to the next participant. Varun Kumar, are you ready, sir? Varun Kumar, sir. Varun Kumar, sir. Sinivasan, sir. Please give a co-host to Varun Kumar. Varun Kumar, can you hear me, sir? <clears throat> Jainti, ma'am. Jainti, ma'am. Ma'am. Yes, you can start your presentation, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Ma'am, shall I start, ma'am? Yes, yes. You can start. Okay, ma'am. Uh, my topic is computational intelligence of data normalization techniques of EEG signals in brain computer interface. Uh, I'm Jainti. Uh, I'm a research scholar in uh, Savis College, Trinal Valley, and also I am, I'm an assistant professor in Aishnar College of Arts and Science. Uh, my guy name is Dr. C. Vela Idam. And my co-guy name is Dr. S. John Peter. This is my outline of my research. The main goal of this research is to improve the classification accuracy by normalizing the extracted futures from different classes, thereby increasing a high accuracy. Then abstract. In this paper, we propose normalization techniques such as uh, set score, robust scalar, min max, mean, unit length, and decimal scaling. At present, here I use statistical future extraction methods as used to extract the exact futures from the raw EG data. Then uh, the futures are normalized using various normalization techniques. Uh, then and the features are selected using Spear Spearman rank correlation coefficient feature selection methods. 
and finally i cla i classified this using uh, svm classification algorithm bca the main goal of bca is to translate the brain signals into commands for community uh, communicating the external world uh, mainly it is an interaction between the human and the computer and also it is a direct communication between the brain and the external devices Uh, it reads the electrical signals from the brain, and the signals are uh, translated into digital form. Uh, especially, it's uh, mainly used for disabled people. Uh, this is my data set information. This is my proposed fr framework. Uh, here, initially, I use the raw EEG signal. Uh, then, I use here the statistical future extraction methods. Uh, mainly the uh, the statistical feature extraction method aims to reduce the number of features in a data set by creating the new features from the existing one uh, mainly uh, the feature extraction mode is responsible for choosing the features which are most important for the future for classification uh, various feature extraction methods uh, are used here i use only statistical feature extraction method like mean median mode standard deviation variance uh, like that then uh, i implement the normalization techniques now the main aim of the normalization is to transform the futures uh, to be in the similar scale this improves the performance and the training stability of the model here i use uh, six, six different types of uh, normalization techniques uh, first uh, set score is a is a variance of the scaling that represents the number of standard deviations away from the mean next robust scalar the robust scalar algorithm scale the futures that are robust to outclass it, it mainly it is used for integral range the median scales of the data are removed by the scaling algorithm according to the quantile range then i use min max the min max scalar is the one of the most popular scaling algorithm it transforms the futures by scaling each future to a given range uh, which is generally 0 1 then mean normalization mean normalization is a way to implement the future scaling uh, mainly calculates and subtract the mean for every futures then unit length is a unit length scalar scales with futures vector so that the length of the uh, length of the set vector one it's being typically for use for applications then finally decimal scaling uh, decimal scaling uh, normalization method is, uh, is is a method of normalization which gives the value is normalized by shifting the decimal points of the value the number of decimal points to move is determined by the absolute maximum value of the given set of data uh, after afterwards uh, i complete the normalization techniques uh, i use uh, spearman correlation coefficient rank or uh, feature selection method feature selection is a dynamicity reduction technique it's aim to choose a subset of relevant futures by removing the irrelevant redundant or nice futures um here i use spearman rank correlation coefficient spearman correlation coefficient is an appropriate for both continuous and discrete ordinal variables the spearman rank correlation coefficient is a non parametric measurement correlation it is used to determine the relation existing between the two sets of data finally i classified this using svm classifier a feature extraction techniques is an is used as an effective way for both reducing the computational complexity and to reduce the high dimensional of data which can be used to increase the classification accuracy to reduce the high dimensionality of bc data set some of the statistical feature uh, extraction methods here i used i already i said then future selection algorithm uh, is a dynamic reduction technique it's a main reason uh, reduction uh, reducing dynamicity removing irrelevant and run features reducing the amount of data needed for learning improving algorithms for predictive algor uh, accuracy this is my classification algorithm here i use uh, uh, six different types of normalization techniques used this is my experimental results finally i conclude my paper uh, here uh, clearly i said that this 
I select the exact features from the raw age data for reducing the computational time and also improve the classification accuracy. This is my references. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Very good presentation uh, regarding your research paper or research subject or research area. One thing I would like to ask, ma'am, uh, regarding implementation of your research work, which yes, tool you are using? MATLAB. MATLAB. Okay. Yes, uh, do you think that, okay, instead of MATLAB, such type of research, where, uh, whenever you are using these different technologies, the Python will be more suitable? Uh Ma'am, uh, Python is also suitable, but uh, initial stage, I, I will start in MATLAB, ma'am. So only I choose this. Okay, okay. So all these results you are also getting in MATLAB because yes. I am uh, normally for my research students, we used to prefer the uh, Python implementation. Okay. Uh, okay, okay but very good, very good research work. Okay. Uh, all the best for your research. Very thank good you, presentation. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, very nice presentation, Jainti, ma'am. Thank uh, you, ma'am. Thank, thank you, ma'am. We can move to the next participant, Mr. Varun Kumar, sir. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon. You can share with the screen, okay? Okay, ma'am. Start your presentation. Am I audible? Am I audible, ma'am? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are audible. You can start your presentation, sir. Good afternoon, Mohan I am Varun Kumar, research scholar. Here I would like to present the topic, role of digital marketing system in our society. Basically, I am, in, uh, I am from commerce discipline. You know, uh, digital marketing is an important tool. Digital marketing is also called online marketing system. Attract the attention of the customers by using information and communication technology is, a, is called digital marketing system. It is a powerful tool and methodology is used for promoting of products and services through internet. We use various kinds of digital marketing techniques for, our, for purchasing products and services and also getting into the ideas of different products. Digital marketing is also called online marketing and cyber marketing. Online marketing combines the internet's creative and technical tools, including design, development, sales, and advertising, while focusing on the following primary business models. These are the business models connected with digital marketing. First one, e-commerce, second, lead-based websites, affiliate marketing, local search, and social medias. We use these models as a part of business. Next, benefits of digital marketing system. As we know that, uh, as compared to the traditional marketing system, digital marketing system in the, became less expensive. 24 into 7, we can, uh, we can contact with the marketing system at any time to establish a good customer uh, relationship between manufacturer and the customer. That means the digital marketing system establish a good customer relationship between market uh, manufacturer and with the customer. It offers a flexible system, not rigid. Offers a mass media, that means providing mass communications to the entire society. Adaption to the external market, increase the customers. Digital marketing system provide mass media to the entire society that create large number of customers to become aware of the products. They provide cheaper products, provide
Varun sir, your voice is not audible, sir. Ready is a hindrance of place. That means. What happened? You are not audible. Am I audible, ma'am? Yeah, I think you are. Uh, you you have some technical issue. Uh, let me ma'am once. Your voice is breaking, sir. Please check it your mic or something. Am I audible? Yes, yeah, it's yes. audible. You yeah, please audible. continue, sir. You okay, please okay. continue. But the voice is chopping up. I think you have a poor internet connection. Yeah, you. Uh, I think he is having poor internet uh, connection as well, sir. You rush up your work, sir. Finish it. Okay, explain. Uh, next, uh, role of digital marketing systems uh, greater dealer interest that create a uh, better dealer interest. Uh, next, steady demand that uh, generate branded image of the product. Next, e-tailing. Next, uh, supplementing salesmanship. It is supplement the role of salesman. Next, meeting competition. Uh, next one, raising standard living of the people. That means e-marketing system increase the standard living of the people and also they provide, um, generate more employment opportunities to the people in the field of uh, digital marketing system. Provide education to the society, people in the society. Also create a motivating factor, okay? There are some problems associated with the online marketing system. That means effects of misleading advertisements comes as a part of uh, cyber terrorism, etc., etc. Uh, confusing the bias. What type of products to be purchased? The problem of economic problems. Uh, dependency on technology, as compared to traditional mode of marketing system, uh, we depend mostly we depend technology uh, for purchasing their products over an excessive use of technology. Uh, security and privacy issues, lack of uh, security for data. Uh, these are the main uh, problems associated, associated with our uh, digital marketing system. When we conclude that the e-marketing system was adopted by several countries all over the world in a fact growing and developing economies like India has become essential for a better performance to a society. Online marketing is advantages to both the consumers and marketers it uses the web, which, which is a medium really accessible and cost effective for bringing together consumers and marketers spread all over the globe. Effective online marketing programs leverage consumer data and customer relationship management systems. Online marketing connects organizations with qualified potential customers and take business development to much higher level than traditional marketing. It also helps a company raise its brand awareness by establishing its online presence across the internet. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Um, very nice presentation. One thing yeah. I would like to ask as far as the digital marketing is concerned. Yes. Okay. Yes, now, what is your own opinion? Whether we should go for by traditional marketing or we should prefer the digital marketing in the coming days? Surely, ma'am, uh, we prefer online marketing system rather than the traditional marketing system because we are living in the globalized era. era. Uh, we are depending, uh, uh, are, uh, that means consumers' demand was vastly increased and also standard living is very essential for our um, economic development. So surely we depend digital marketing system for our daily life. Okay, but see for digital marketing, all the technology issues, then cyber security issues, all these things we have to consider. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Oh. Okay. Okay. Chal. Varun Kumar, sir, you get the valuable suggestion from madam, okay, so that you can improve your uh, uh, research work, right, sir? Sure, sure, ma'am. Thank oh. you for giving an opportunity, Indrani, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Varun, sir. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Next, we can move to the next participant. Okay. Uh, Deepa Lakshmi, madam, are you there? Raja Lakshmi, madam. Raja Lakshmi is there? Okay. Someone, Deepa Lakshmi is there. But also. someone, okay. Oh, okay. Okay, you can uh, share your session. Someone already shared, madam. 
मैं मन से कहूँ I think Deep Lakshmi may be let her complete, madam. No issue. Okay. Let okay, her complete. Okay. Madam, start your presentation, madam. Ma'am, I am Radha Lakshmi. Shall I start, madam? Yes, yes. Yes, madam. Start. Okay. I'm not able to share, ma'am. Ma'am, please share your yes, screen, yes. madam. Ma'am, is it shareable? Not, Are you able to? Not, not visible. Ma'am, no. No, 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 not visible, ma'am. Go to the so, okay, next. Okay, ma'am, you go to the next participant. I will okay, catch you later. Okay, okay. Who um, is ready? Next one, madam. Agami, madam, ready? Agamati, madam, get in. Sivagami. Sivagami, madam, are you ready? श्रीनिवासन सर मैम मैम हमें रानी ओके रानी मैम मैम आई एम रानी मैम स्टार्ट प्रेजेंट शाले शार ओके थैंक यू मैम Good afternoon, ma'am. I am Rani. I am a research scholar from Department of Computer Science, Karpanam Academy of Higher Education, and at present I am working at an assistant professor at Arunachal College, Karmathur Madurai, ma'am. Thank you for this opportunity for uh, Indrani, ma'am, and uh, the expert, ma'am. My topic is uh, it's a review paper, a review on IoT-based preventive care support system for elders. The key topics are research domain importance, IoT technologies, preventive elder care system, and research issues, and uh, Multi objective requirement in IOT pre preventive care framework and proposed research and references, ma'am. The IOT domain importance, ma'am. Yes, yes, yes. Continue. One minute. So increasing productivity and efficiency for business operations. We have to give importance with IOT, and moreover, it is totally depending on deriving data, drive and insert from IOT data to help better and ma. Better managing the business easily and seamlessly connecting the physical businesses world to the digital world to drive quick time to value. For that purpose, it is very important at this scenario. The need of IoT technologies. The major uh, uh, points I, I I pointed out here: globalization, interoperability, smart transformation. Globalization means to build a hyper-connected world. We can create with the help of IoT technologies. interoperability means we can create we can connect all these things processes data things and the people this is called as internet of everything for that purpose it is a very important thing at this uh, time smart transformation is a it's provide a secure comfort life for human the smart, smart transformation in the area of smart city smart home smart pollution control smart energy saving smart transportation and smart industries etc the most generic architecture proposed for iot is the there is a generic uh, architecture it consists of four layer models first layer is perception layer network layer middleware layer and application layer perception layer totally depending on the sensors and actuators network layer deals with the technologies zigbee wifi bluetooth 3g and 4g technologies middleware layer based on cloud computing edge computing and storage application layer this is used for 
smart grid smart health care smart building smart transportation uh, this uh, remote accessing processes and with uh, user uh, user friendly applications we can connect with um, end user then preventive elder care system the need of a preventive elder care system is the aging is a normal biological process leads to occurrence of age related diseases the physiological changes may result in perceptation in chronic diseases like osteoporosis and depression with the problem of preventive care is also more critical issue in recent years among the elderly community because of covid pandemic issues to address this issue iot can be used to uh, track the day to day activities and changes among elders and processes in every stages at the sensing biological and env environmental information processing transmitting storing and decision making with the help of edge computing and cloud to predict the effects earlier the preventive elder care um, uh, the uh, it, it, uh, new technology is called as ambient assisted living with this we can connect um, people with uh, uh, sensors and uh, environmental factors with uh, wirelessly connected with each other the smart home environment consisting of wearable sensors sleep monitoring environment monitoring security system activity detection these are all the activity activities involved with this uh, preventive elder care system with this uh, the key components are sensors and activators um, computing processes decision making and uh, communication wireless communication network is involved with in this process there are various types of sensors are involved with this um elder care uh, preventive care these are all the various types of sensors headbands uh, some of the sensors are wearable some of the sensors are implantable uh, these are all the uh, examples of uh, sensors headbands sociometric badges camera clips smart watches uh, um, uh, oximeter um, electro uh, elect accelerometer altimeter these are all the examples of uh, wearable sensors the preventive elder care system uh, uh, consists of several functionalities these are all the functions of elderly care including real time monitoring of indoor pushing activities tracking and uh, recording the vital signs the, the first layer based on the sensors the second layer is uh, based on the networking activities that is precise positioning and we are by using the wearable technologies we can connect with the cloud to processing the content and uh, sensor data and stored in the database and display the alarming signals when there is there is any uh, uh, changes or vital signs occurred in the elderly people uh, the, the in my uh, uh, literature review some model on utility model is created by the expert team of people that is one iot based exp exploratory muscle training system then iot intelligent monitoring variable system for copd rehabilitation exercise then iot based icf evaluation system for respiratory rehabilitation of copd is a chronic obstructive pulmonary disease utility model to recover the to rehabilitate from their chronic diseases uh, then um, uh, a federated transfer learning framework was proposed by uh, uh, proposed that is uh, having the feature of a deep learning neural network with end to end feature learning and classifier training by taking raw inputs of user data as inputs then uh, another framework was um, uh, another study is a first empirical study to assess the intention of elderly people to use uh, smart home from a healthcare perspective it, it consists of nine constructs the, this is based on the uh, unified theory of acceptance and use of technology framework this framework consists of nine constructs that is uh, behavioral intention perceived trust facilitating conditions social influences technology anxiety perceived cost effort expectancy performance expectancy and expert advice these are all the factors involved with the elderly healthcare system and the issues also faced in this system these nine constructs are um, taken into considered in the utwat model then uh, security issue is the one of the major issue in this system because the medical uh, um, privacy data is going to be shared among a network there is a possibility of getting uh, malicious actions inside the network so there is a authentication framework was generated uh, it consists of trust relationship between bone sensors and ensure the confidentiality of the transmitted elders sensitivity data 
so this framework was created for that purpose to create the um, ensure the confidentiality purpose then the lot of research issues is still in iot industry because of this heterogeneous nature in the field of security privacy interoperability and standards regulatory and rights legal rights and emerging economics and developments of areas of issues due to nature of heterogeneities of iot there are several research is needed in future in this areas ma these are all these a few references used for my literature review thank you ma'am okay thank you very nice presentation uh, you, one thing i would like to ask <coughs> that up to how much extent uh, you proceed your research work in this area ma'am uh, in the perception layer only i have to study it ma'am okay uh -huh. means um, okay okay only conceptual uh, uh, yes actually research work you have not started yet yeah, yes ma'am okay okay now one thing i would like to suggest that whenever you are you will start your implementation work you yes. should focus on privacy and security issues okay, okay? whenever you are using iot and all the things okay ma'am okay yeah okay thank you Very thank nice you so much ma'am Oh, thank you ma'am oh, thank, thank you, you indrani ma'am thank you ma'am initiation is a very good ma'am you start your research work so that you can follow up okay thank thank you so much ma'am thank ma you ma'am thank you uh, next participant sivagami madam <laughs> sivagami madam are you there yes ma'am no okay madam please shall i share my screen ma'am yeah oh, wait ma'am yes uh, yes ma'am yes ma'am ma okay ma'am rani madam please close your screen ma'am fit this fit the screen Shall I start, ma'am? Is my screen visible, ma'am? Yes. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes. Okay, ma'am. Very good afternoon to all present here. I'm M. Shiva Kami, research scholar, Department of Computer Applications, Arigpa University, Karaykudi. I'm going to present my paper on the topic of improvised SVM technique for prediction of cardiac cases under the guidance of Dr. P. Professor Inati, Directorate of Business Education, Haripa University, Kadikudi. My paper ID is a 22 SCIT14. And this is my abstract. The changes in food have. habit of the lack of body care triggers numerous diseases in human humans so among the heart diseases the among the various diseases heart diseases are of a topmost priority so human quality of data are generated every day so retrieval of information so the linear scale that is achieved using machine learning algorithms in this paper i'm focusing uh, on spm classifier using the spm kernel trick uh, in this uh, among the first seven types the radial basis kernel is giving the better accuracy i'm comparing with the four kernel tricks in the radial basis kernel giving the better accuracy precision and recall that i'm displayed here the values the next one is uh, introductions um, early detection of uh, um illness will uh, save plenty of lives in computer aided that is a uh, researchers uh, seek for cost effective diagnostic tool in uh, analysis of uh, uh, human issues um so they are expecting the cost uh, effective method without side effects 
So here, the computer aided diagnosis, machine learning algorithms are employed to detect patterns, recognize relationships, and even predict the development of disease. Um, so effective outcome of uh, this uh, importantly depends on the, the particular features. I'm having 14 features in that I'm re um, retrieving six using the feature selection methods. So in my literature survey, I um, analyzed that most of them used an, um, nine out of 13 attributes and they are using on the kernel trick that is a here sigmoid kernel trick is used here in this paper they have used the six attributes 13 and the linear kernel trick is used here and uh, here a Gaussian kernel trick they are implemented and in this paper, seven attributes are selected using feature selection method and polynomial kernel is implemented here. So actually kernel functions, it is an SPM classifier. Actually SPM is a supervised machine learning algorithms. Um, the reason for the classifications is better that I, in a SPM classified, there is a kernel trick. It is used for transforming the data points and creating an optimal decision boundary. So kernel helps to deal with high dimensional data in a very efficient method. In this paper, I'm focusing on four popular SPM kernel functions and their prediction accuracy. So first one is linear kernel. It is a basic type of a kernel and there's a very simple and faster one than other functions when comparing. And uh, the formula is, uh, I'm displaying the formula. And the second one is a polynomial kernel. The polynomial kernel is a, a not a, a just preferred when comparing with others because, because it is less efficient and accurate. The polynomial kernel formula and that I'm used on is and so third one is a Gaussian radial basis function RBF and uh, it is most preferred and uh, it is usually chosen for non-linear data and uh, and the formula I have uh, I implemented is displaying here. Uh, the last one, the fourth one is sigmoid kernel. Um, it is a uh, used preferred for neural networks. This kernel function is similar to two layer perceptron model. Uh, so uh, the, it is a commonly used kernel, Gaussian kernel, when there is a no prior knowledge of given data set. The data set descriptions. Um, actually, the uh, uh, 14 attributes and the uh, um, uh, 13 attributes are displayed, and the last one is target attribute. Uh, whether a one means it is a hard disease present, and zero means uh, they have no hard disease. The study tool I'm using the Python version 3.9. Um, so, on the performance measures, I'm focusing on accuracy, precision, recall, F, and score. So my proposed methodology after um, giving the input, the data set is splitting in the tenfold cross validation, and the pre processing processor, min max normalization, and then the kernel functions using the four kernel tricks a linear sigmoid radial basis and polynomials is implemented and the data is given a test to after the SPM class where whether they have hard disses um, present of hard disses yes or not so measurement of four kernel methods according to the accuracy recall precision and firm score the same as are displayed in the chart work so radial basis are performed the better one so it is a data and uh, the hybrid model of it. So this is my references. Yes, uh, huh, yes, Shugami ma'am, uh, nice presentation.
one thing i would like to ask that uh, for this your research work whether you actually collected the patient's data from the cardiologist hello ma'am ha huh? we can move to the next participant ma'am okay chalo theek hai yes okay, any question is there for them ठीक है चलो मैम वी विल मूव टू नेक्स्ट पार्टिसिपेंट ओके मैडम दीपलक्ष्मी मैडम आर यू देयर यस मैम ओके यू शेयर योर स्क्रीन मैम ऑलरेडी इन स्क्रीन प्लीज फिट योर स्क्रीन मैडम टेल मी मैम टेल मी मैम ओके नाउ दीपलक्ष्मी कैन शेयर इट आई थिंक ओके मैम Ma'am. Good afternoon to everyone. I am Deepa Rajesh, Ramakrishna College of Arts and Science from Coimbatore. I am a full-time research scholar under the guidance of Dr. Yam Chandran, Associate Professor of Department of Computer Science, Computer Application. My research topic is a detailed literature review on grass project defect prediction and heterogeneous defect prediction. My abstract: Software defect prediction has been much studied in the field of researching in software within project software. Works well as there is sufficient amount of data available to train. Yes, ma'am. माई सैड इज नॉट Ma'am, shall we start, ma'am? Ma'am, shall we start, ma'am? Yes, you can start, ma'am. Okay. My uh, my abstract is software defect prediction has been much studied in the field of research in software engineering. Within project software defect prediction works as well as uh, there is a sufficient amount of data available to train any model, but rarely lo local training data to the project. is available for prediction the heterogeneous grass project defect prediction is considered as toughest challenge of challenge because of the gap between now we are unmute putting you the product प्रोडक्शन the different categories of cross project straight cross project defect prediction mixed cross project defect prediction mixed cross project project defect prediction with target class data pairwise cross project defect prediction cross pro straight cross project defection means uh, data set data set given target project that means cross project is available data sets and different data sets are there in strict cross project defection one second heterogeneous cross project defect means is aimed to build a different defect 
project more production model for the target project by receiving receiving data set from source project where the source project data set and target project data set have a different features cross project different difference first of all within software defect prediction same same project same model uh, div some different data set that is called within the software project defects to improve the quality of software and the efficiency of the process identification of the defect prone modules at the right time is known as software defect prediction that is called within software defect prediction cross software defect prediction model means in recent the researchers started focusing on automated software defect prediction using cross project defect previous data instead of same project or with identical measures that means same project uh, source project or same target project or same that uh, data sets are uh, same that is uh, easy to uh, collect the data and identify the uh, easy to uh, access the data and test easy to uh, tested to the data that is called cross uh, cross software defect production a depth analysis of the various exiting lectures related to the prediction model of heterogeneous prediction data project and the cross project defect production using machine learning and the statistical method finally the Preliminary challenges in selection feature of matrix class imbalance handling and the distribution of the data sets are discussed. My future work is uh, future selection algorithm, classification model, supervising model, decoding model. The main problem is focused in this research work, which aims to develop the optimized prediction model for the heterogeneous cross project defection in near future. Most of the literatures are worked based on the future work ranking. Uh, and selection to overcome the gap between the source and destination that means source project and destination project i am using for the uh, future selection algorithm classification model supervising models and decoding models my conclusion my research work was completely based on to develop the optimized prediction model for heterogeneous class defect model in the near future and constant on a yeah, novel and robust future selection model and supervised pattern and understanding and clustering model and deep learning model will be developed to overcome the problem in this survey for the heterogeneous crash def software defect prediction my literature review my reference uh, this uh, base papers on mathematical using software engineering software quality management and quality assurance papers Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Somebody will have any ma'am. Srinivasan, sir. Srinivasan, sir. Madam. Somebody will have any ma'am. Come to co host to Kurumle. I am not a man who was Yes, am I audible? Uh, yes, ma'am. Hi, yeah, Deep Lakshmi, ma'am. Uh, you said that this is your research work, okay? Yes, ma'am. Now, uh, you are saying that you are implementing this work by using different two three models okay? yes ma'am yes ma but i i think that instead of preparing these two three models because once you will start your research work i think you will find it difficult to go for implementing in model one then model two then model three yes so instead of this you choose initially which model will be better for your research work because it will take a lot of time to implement all these things. Ma'am, uh, excuse me, ma'am. Uh, this is a uh, four algorithms I'm using, ma'am. Future selection, supervising model, decoding, and the classification. These four models are based on one by one, one, ma'am. Already I completed future selection, supervising model, ma'am. These okay. are a uh, good output. Uh, I got it, ma'am. You got it. Okay. Uh, yes, okay. ma'am. Then uh, next I move to decoding model and the classification model, ma'am. 
Okay, okay so and I'm after thinking. that, whether you are going for the comparative study for all these models, okay. and then you will suggest that which model will be the better one to use. Okay. okay. Uh, comparative studies not there, ma'am. Is based on a fully efficiency checking, ma'am. Okay, efficient checking. Okay, ठीक है. Nice work. No problem. ठीक okay. है. Very good. Hmm? Thank you so much. Right. Okay, Deepa Lakshmi Madam, nice presentation. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Indrani, ma'am, and Ilakia, ma'am, also, ma'am. Thank, Thank you, you so much, ma'am. Thank you. We can move to the next participant, Usha Devi, ma'am. Are you there? Usha Devi. Hello. Usha Devi, madam. Yes, ma'am. Can you present the paper, madam? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. Please share your screen. Shah Devi, madam, are you able to hear? Usha Devi, are you able to hear me, madam? No. Chalo dure, sir. Yeah, madam. Yeah, ma'am. Ma'am, I am Chelly. Yeah, you can present it, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am, visible, ma'am. Ma'am, are you visible? Yes, yes, you are visible, sir. You can present it. Thank you, thank you so much, ma'am. <clears throat> Uh, good afternoon to everyone. I am K. Chaladari, doing part-time research under the guidance of Dr. N. Sujada, Assistant Professor, PG and Research Department of Computer Science, Sri Meenaji Government Arts College, Madurai. First of all, I would like to thank the organizing committee members for this wonderful opportunity. The topic I am going to present today is a survey on infrared thermography imaging for the early detection of plant leaf basis. The outline of my talk is Introduction, concept of thermal imaging process, literature on the thermography imaging techniques, materials and methods used, different types of thermal cameras and it uses, conclusion and last one is references. Introduction, thermal imaging technique is a process that uses infrared radiation and thermal energy to gather all information about object which we take under our study. Thermal imaging method is based on the infrared energy emitted from all objects. This energy is also called as heat signature. As it base source is only the heat energy. In this technique, uh, the quantity of radiation emitted is uh, proportional to the overall heat of the object. Uh, the sophisticated device which is available in the form of a cell phone is comprised of a sensitive heat sensor that has the capacity to pick up the minor difference in temperature. And next one is the concept of thermal imaging process. This process of converting infrared radiation into visible images uh, that depict the spectral distribution of temperature differences in a sense viewed by a thermal camera. A thermal imaging is a non-restrictive, non-contact and rapid system. It reports temperature through measuring infrared radiation uh, in, uh, in, uh, emitted by a material surface. Thermography is an excellent example of a visualization technique. Visualization techniques are often used to present data from uh, simulations or experiments in plots or images or in order to make analysis of the data as easy as possible. Powerful software techniques often enable the user to modify the visualization in real time. 
uh, thereby allowing easy perception of uh, patterns and relations in the abstract data. Uh, this is my literature uh, technique. This tabular column provides the details of the researchers who have so far worked in the field of thermography imaging techniques and the analysis performed by them. And materials and methods used in thermography. This image provides the wavelength region of UV visible light near infrared region, uh, short wave infrared region, middle wavelength infrared region, and longer wavelength infrared region. Digital camera has the capability to encapsulate wavelengths between 300 nanometer to 700 nanometer only, which is our visible wavelength region. The thermal camera can capture images in the wavelength ranges of 8 to 15 micrometer. Uh, the data uh, the, the data retrieved from the camera is visualized imaging which act uh, as the uh, digital sorry the thermal camera sends the temperature by the identifying and capturing the simulated layers infrared light produced by objects based on the hotness of the object infrared radiation produced in more this camera uses this radiation to sense the image of the object capture it and then convert it into the images that can be identified with our normal eye. The similar process is used to capture the images of the healthy leaf and diseased leaf. This figure given below clearly depicts the processing of the thermography technique. The first step is image retrieving. The image captured in the camera is retrieved as data into the computer. The second step is image pre-processing Sir, is the, post your slide in slide show, sir. The slide is not at all moving. Oh, sir. Put it in slide show. Yeah, ma'am. Yes, ma okay, ma'am. Yeah. The different types of thermal camera and it is uses. Thermal imaging camera is uses heat sensor to convert infrared image to visual imaging. Tell the research. The sensor, the sensor sends the heat energy in the plant leaf, capture it through the infrared energy, and one is the data retrieved from the camera visualize the ima image as digital outputs in the form of video or images. <clears throat> Near infrared cameras, a near infrared camera covers the wavelength ranging from 0 0.7 to 1.4 micrograms. It has a unique sensitivity profile that helps project distant objects. Ma'am? Chaladri, sir, you slide on slide show. Move away. First slide is visible. Yeah, move away. Share screen. Move away. The slide show on. Yeah, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Mama, are you visible, ma'am? Yes, visible. Slide move. Move the slide, sir. Move, oh. move the slide, next slide. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. Near infrared cameras, <coughs> near infrared camera covers the wavelength ranging from 0 0.7 to 1.4 microns. It has unique sensitivity profile that helps project distance object with a clear vision in incorporates optical imaging techniques to determine yes, various sir, your slide is not at all moving it is in introduction that is yeah please put in the slide show yeah ma'am slide i think you are you are in word format or something no ma'am repeat it Sir, you have a slide show, you the next slide, sir. You have the introduction, but it's visible. Yeah,
Det ser vi med. Med. Med mor med. Sir, mor til den neste slide. Okay, ma'am. Sir, sir, F5 press pannenga, sir. Ongla oda keyboard lande F5 press pannenga. Press pani te ma'am. Ye visible lagate. No, sir. Ye visible lagate. Just press the F5 key, uh, key, sir. Otherwise, you please select the next. Okay, you are going to the conclusion, ah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, fine. Completed. Sorry, ma'am. The thermal imaging techniques is conclusion. The thermal imaging technique is an excellent process that provides good quality data set. It provides accurate uh, predictions which can be made by made to detect and identify plant leaf disease at an early stage itself. The data are attained by us images, so it provides the possibility of comparing the data of healthy and infected part of the plants. The images retrieved from the camera is analyzed using deep learning methods. Uh, <coughs> deep learning has provided good results in the task to detecting the stress implied and the leaf of the plant. The main purpose of the review is to emphasize a low cost time consuming hardware equipment uh, with the latest uh, technology of artificial intelligence. Uh, these are the reference used for the survey of thermal imaging techniques. Thank you, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, thank you, thank you ma'am. Sorry. Okay. We can move to the next participant. Usha Devi, madam. Yes, ma'am. Start your presentation. Okay, ma'am. Sir, you please quit, quit your presentation slide. Okay. Tadi, ma'am, screen share pananga. Yes, ma'am. Share your screen, please. Not visible, ma. Sinema sensor, the co-host put the king la screen sharing. My screen is visible now. No, no, no. You are not at all share your screen till now, ma. You are using phone, now, ma. Are you using yes, phone, cell phone? Yes, yes ma. Not at all visible.
Okay, Usha Madam. Usha yes, Madam, you please yes, take it out. Afternoon session, you can present it, okay? Okay, ma'am, okay. Thank you. Okay, ma'am. Umbra Bulavani, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thanks for your valuable uh, information given for the researchers, madam. Thank you very much for your uh, technical review also, ma'am. Okay, and thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, once again. Huh. Thank you, ma'am, for calling me as a resource person. Thanks a lot. You can leave the session, ma'am. Okay, okay. Dear participants, around 2.30, please be on time. 2.30. The last session will be on 2.30. And around 3.30 to 4.30, technical review will be there. So be on time around 2.30. Now we can leave the session. <laughs>